Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In the previous video, you saw me take a 2D print and show you how I would go about modeling the part that you see on screen. And what I wanna do in this video is continue this process, but this time I want to add all the tool paths I'm gonna to need to machine this part in the mill that I have in the garage. If you want to play along, you can just go to my previous video and you can follow along with the steps and how I drew this part. And to get ready to machine this, I'm gonna switch from design to manufacture. In addition to clicking the link to get the data for this part, I've also created a tool library that covers all the parts needed for this model engine. And if you don't have a tool library set up or you want to use one for practice, what you can do is in the description, there's a link to a OneDrive folder I've created where I have uploaded the tool library that I'm going to use for all the parts in this video series. And once you have that link clicked and you download it to your computer, you can go to the manage drop down and choose tool library. And then either under the local library or the cloud library, whichever one you choose to use, you can right click and choose import libraries, then browse to that tool library you downloaded and you'll have the same Autodesk model engine tool library that I'm using for these uh, video tutorials. The thing, other thing to note about these is that I've gone through and added in all the vendor information on where I'm buying these parts. So for instance, if I go to this 3A uh, end mill, you can see I put a link to where I purchased this tool from and you can go and find the website in the tool that I'm using and you can order any of the same tools that I'm using. Um, the feeds and speeds that I have set up, I've got these set up for my machine and my horsepower capabilities and my up to 12,000 RPM bindle capabilities. So if your machine don't have those same kind of capabilities, you may have to make some adjustments to make your tools cut and perform the same way that you're going to see them on the videos of me machining these parts. This video may be slightly longer than a video you're used to seeing from me. I don't want to rush through the process of making these cam tool paths. And when you're creating cam tool paths, details matter. And I want to run through and explain all the details of the things I'm doing as I go. So it's not going to be overly long, but it might be slightly longer than what you're used to seeing on my tutorials. The first thing I want to do on this part is I'm going to make a setup. So I'm going to kind of work left to right across this toolbar up here. And I'm going to start with the setup tab and I'm going to leave my work coordinate system in this orientation. You can see it came in the right orientation and I'm going to leave it at the top center of the part. I'm now going to move over to the stock tab and under my mode, I'm going to choose to do a fixed size box. One of the things you might note is I always set my roundup to nearest to be zero. And then I click on the three dots and make that my default. And what that then tells me is the size of my stock and the size of my part are exactly the same, which makes it easy for me to look and decide what size stock do I want to cut this part out of. So for my X, I'm going to use 2.5. For my Y, I've bought material that is two inches in Y. And then for the Z thickness, it's one inch in thickness. If I click on the front of the view cube, you can see what's happened is Fusion has put some of the material above the part and some of the material below the part. For the Z model position, what I wanna do is I wanna offset it from the top and just add enough that I can face off, like say 20 thousandths of an inch. This gives me as much material to hang down in the vice jaws to clamp onto, and I only have to clean up a little bit on the top of the part. If I move over to the post processor tab, you can see I have my WCS offset defaulted to be one. And if you want to do the same, you can just put a one in this field and then right click and say, save as user default. And every time you create a setup, you'll start with one. And remember, if you put a one in this field, you get a G54. If you put a two in the field, you get a G55. A three will give you a G56 and so on. So I'm happy with my setup. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay and now I'm ready to start adding some tool path. The first thing I'm gonna do on this part is I'm gonna add a facing tool path. From the 2D menu, I'll just grab the facing command. And now I'm gonna go grab a tool, I'm gonna click on the select button, and I'm gonna go to this Autodesk model engine tool library, and I'm gonna grab tool number two, which is a two inch face mill, and I'm gonna choose select. This brings up the feeds and speeds that I've created for this facing tool path. I don't wanna make any changes, so I'm gonna move over to the geometry tab. On the geometry tab, you can see a yellow box that's shown up on the screen, and that represents the bounds of the stock I've defined. One of the things I often say in my training classes is I 
sort of have a mantra that means nothing means everything. So I haven't selected anything, so that means I've selected everything in this case, and I don't need to make any choices. I'm gonna move over to the Heights tab. The two fields I'm gonna pay the most attention to as we go through this tutorial are gonna be the top height and the bottom height. You can see the tools cutting from the stock top, and it's cutting down to the model top, which is exactly what I would want a facing operation to do. So I'm gonna move over to the passes tab. On the passes tab, I don't have very many changes to make here. I might wanna do a slight stock offset. I'm gonna type in 0.05, and then I'm just gonna let my mouse hover over that field, and you can see a pop-up comes up and tells me what Fusion is doing. It's taking the boundary of the stock that I defined and increasing that boundary just slightly, and this will ensure that I cover the entire face of the part. My step over is based on my tool diameter and I'm happy with that. The only other change I want to make is I'm going to set my direction to be climb only. That'll make the tool come across, climb cut, lift, go back to the beginning and go across and climb cut as well. If you want to do both ways, there's really no problem with that. Sometimes I just prefer a climb cut for the best finish. On the linking tab, I just want to make sure that I have one option checked and that is extend before retract you can see i already had that on and the reason i had it on is i've set this as a user default so that every time i do a facing operation this default is checked and what this does is it makes the tool go completely off the stock before it retracts so with that change or with that set i can hit okay and that is my first toolpath. If I wanna see what this toolpath does, I can just go ahead and click on the simulate machine and choose the play button. And now I'll see the tool go through the range of motion and see it cut. I'm using the comparison colorization mode. And what that means is anything that's blue is remaining stock and anything that's green is finished part face. So I'm happy with that facing operation and I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is to spot drill my holes. For the spot drilling operation, I'm gonna choose the drill command. And again, I'll go to my tool library by clicking on select and choosing the library. And inside of here, you can see tool number five is a quarter inch 90 degree spot drill. And I wanna make sure to choose the aluminum drilling preset. And then I'm gonna select that. For the geometry, I'm gonna click on my two hole faces that I wanna spot for this eighth inch hole. I'm only gonna do the eighth inch hole for this particular first one. And the reason for that is I'm gonna move over to the heights tab and you can see that we're cutting from the whole top, but it's going down to the whole bottom, which is way too deep for a spotting operation. And for this one, I wanna put the spot and the chamfer on that hole at the same time. And one of the unknown options I find with users is if you hit this drop down, there are two handy options here. One is to chamfer width and the other is to chamfer diameter. I want to use the chamfer width option and I'm going to tell Fusion that when it's done spotting, I want a 0.01 or 10 thousandths chamfer on that hole. On the cycle tab, I'm just going to do a drilling wrap it out and I'll hit OK. And there is my spot drill for those two holes. And it's also going to add the chamfer to the holes as it creates it. I'm going to do another drilling operation and my tool is already selected, so I don't need to go grab it again. And this time I'm going to go grab the geometry tab and I'm gonna choose one of these holes instead of grabbing the other four holes I'm just gonna choose select same diameter but first I'm also gonna select this inside hole I want to spot drill that big hole on this part as well now I can click is click on select same size diameter and you can see it grabs all the rest of the holes and I'm ready to move on to the heights tab and set my heights again I'm gonna leave my top height set to whole top but for the bottom height I'm also going to set that to the whole top. So essentially, I haven't cut anything yet. I need to put a negative offset for how deep I want that tool to go. And I'm gonna add a negative offset of minus 0.05. Once I do that, I get a preview of the tool tip and you can see I'm not going down so deep that I'm hitting the sides of the hole. So I'm happy with that. And I've got my other holes and the center bore spot drilled. And now I can look at the cycle, drilling wrap it out is fine, and I can hit OK. Now I'm ready to do some of my hole drilling. So I'll again start out with a drilling operation, but before I do, I created a section analysis on this part. This isn't necessary, this is just to help me demonstrate something. I'm gonna turn that on, and you can see my part is cut in half, right through the center of my two eighth inch holes. Now I'm gonna grab the drill command, and select my tool, and go to my library, 
and in my library you can see tool number six is an eighth inch drill and by default it's an aluminum drilling preset and I'm going to select that and on the geometry I just want to click on the two hole faces of my part now if I look at this for the front the reason I wanted to split this is you can see the drill tip is going down to the bottom of the hole but it's not matching the point of the hole that I created in the model so on the heights tab I'm happy with the top height being hole top but for the bottom height I'd like to check the box that says drill tip through bottom and that brings the point down to the uh, to the point that I have modeled on my part and I'm happy with that and now I'm gonna move on to the cycle tab this is a pretty plain Jane high-speed steel drill and it's not a super high performance drill so rather than a drilling wrap it out I'm going to do a chip breaking partial retract on this so it pecks into the part and I'm just gonna accept the defaults and I'll choose OK now I can unslice my part by clicking on the analysis folder and then you'll see one of the things that's super handy is if you look at your tool paths for drilling operations if you pull this bar over sometimes it's not expanded far enough if you pull this over for the browser you you can see the cycle of the drill that you've chosen so that you don't if you wonder did I set that to a chip breaker you don't have to edit the toolpath to go look at that you can see that in line in the toolpath all right I'm ready to go and drill the other holes on my part so I'm going to do another drilling operation I want to take a look at one more thing before I do that you can see I go down here and I come up here so I might want to start that next drilling operation over on this side so I don't do a lot of wasted machine motion. I'm going to do a drill. I'm going to select a tool, but you might notice that I didn't measure the diameter of the tool first or the diameter of the hole. And one of the tricks you can do is if I put my mouse over this hole, it'll pop up and tell me what the diameter of that hole is. And now I can see it's a 201 diameter hole, so I can go and choose select tool. Go to my tool library and grab tool number nine, which is a 0 0.201 number seven drill and I'm gonna use the aluminum drilling preset and I'll go select my geometry which is gonna be this hole face and I'm gonna say select same diameter and it's grab, gonna grab all the rest of the holes. On the heights tab again, if I look at this, it's taken the tip down to the bottom. So for the bottom height, I wanna make sure to do drill tip through bottom. And I'm gonna drill through an additional 0.05 or 50 thousandths of an inch. And on my cycle tab, I again wanna choose chip breaking partial retract. I'll run with the defaults here and I'm gonna click OK. And now I'll click on my home view. And there you can see I have my drilling operation completed for my 201 diameter holes. The final drilling operation I want to do is I'm going to use a 3 8 inch drill that I need to use for this project and I'm going to push that 3 8 inch drill through the center bore and when I come back and I rough out the center bore with an adaptive operation I'm going to use a 3 8 inch diameter end mill so that end mill can plunge down through the center of the hole instead of helixing into the material and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next operation. So I'm going to select the drill and I'm going to go select the tool that I want out of the model engine library and you can see that there's tool number 11 a 3 8 inch drill and I'm going to use the aluminum drilling preset on my geometry I'm going to click on this whole face and for the heights I'm going to do something slightly different whole top is fine for the top height but for the bottom height I'm going to go to the stock bottom I want this drill to go all the way through the bottom and that'll help to get the coolant and chips and things like that out when I do the roughing operation of the bore coming up I wanna drill the tip through the bottom of the stock and I'm not gonna be super careful about this. I'm gonna drill through by 100,000 of an inch or 0.1. And on the cycle tab, I'm also going to choose chip breaking partial retract and I'm gonna run with all the defaults here. And if I simulate this where I'm at right now, you can see we get, I'll make this go a little faster. We get the facing operation, the spot drills, and then we do the hole drilling operation and we plunge all the way through the part so there we're gone through all the stock and again that's going to be useful to help get the chips and the coolant and stuff out of this pocket for the next operation that we're going to do and the next operation we're going to do is we're going to rough out this inside diameter i'm going to use 2d adaptive operations to do this and i'm going to do a separate operation for the inside and the outside and you'll see the reason why as we go through and apply these tool paths from the 2d menu i'm going to select the adaptive clearing uh, process and now I want to go grab a tool and the tool I'm going to grab is the Autodesk model engine and I want to grab tool number two which is a 3 8 inch end mill and note that I have 
a description of this being a chip splitter, I'm using this tool for the first time. One of the things that I find that happens when you're using, when you're going deep into cuts is you get these really long stringy chips that stack up and they don't clear out very well. This tool, if you look at the link down here and you pull that up, it's got little breaks in the flutes that help to split the chips into shorter segments and hopefully get them out of your uh, pocket and not have them stack out so much. So this will be the first time I'm trying this tool. I'm gonna choose select and for my geometry, I wanna choose the very bottom of that circle is what I wanna machine and that's all I need to select. And you see I get a blue preview region showing me what I'm gonna cut. For the heights, I'm going to choose to cut from the model top for the top height and for the bottom height, I'm gonna choose to cut all the way through the stock bottom. The reason I'm doing this is eventually I'm gonna roll this part over for side two and there's gonna be a hat of material sticking up and I wanna face that off. I'm gonna face from the outside in and when I start to cut towards this, this slug isn't gonna go, it's gonna fall free. And that's a decent sized chunk of material that goes flying around the machine. So what I wanna do on this side is I wanna cut all the way through the part and get rid of that slug. So when I go to the other side and face it off, I don't have any material that's gonna go flinging around in the machine. So I'm gonna go stock bottom. And then I'm just gonna say, I wanna go minus 0.02 20 thousandths of an inch past the bottom of the stock just to make sure that tool gets all the way through. On the passes tab, I have my optimal load set up to what I think I want for this adaptive tool path, which is roughly 15%. Normally I would go a little bit more, but I'm gonna be asking this tool to go fairly deep. So I was slightly conservative on my step over especially for trying this tool for the first time. I do want multiple depths on this particular option, so I'm gonna choose multiple depths. And my roughing step down for this, I'm gonna do two step downs of a half of an inch per step down. I wanna leave some radial stock, so I'm gonna set 0 0.01 on the walls for a cleanup pass, but I don't need to leave any axial stock. I wanna cut all the way to that 20 thousandths of an inch past the bottom of the part. And I'm going to enable smoothing. Smoothing will help reduce the number of of points that are created and it'll make the code smaller and make the machine run the code slightly better. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna move over to the linking tab. On the linking tab, I don't think there's a lot I have to change. I shouldn't need to change the stay down distance or level. We'll talk about those in the next tool path coming up. But I do wanna tell Fusion that I've pre-drilled this hole and it doesn't need to helix in. So what I'll do is underneath the positions, you'll note that there's a pre-drill position. I wanna click on the edge of this hole and what I'll see is a little white dot that appears indicating that that's where the tool is going to pre-drill. And now I can hit okay. And I will see, there's my two step downs and uh, we'll do a quick simulation on this and see what this tool path is gonna do. I'm gonna start right at the adaptive. So what you'll see is the tool, I'm gonna slow down just a little bit. The tool will plunge into that hole and start to spiral out. And the reason I drilled the hole all the way through is now hopefully some of those chips and the coolant are being pushed down through that hole and going away rather than being recut. Now it's gonna do the second step down. It's gonna go all the way around. And when I look at this, if I flip this over, you can see now when I machine the back side, there's no slug material that's gonna get thrown because I've plunged all the way through the bottom of my stock. So I'm happy with that adaptive tool path and I'm gonna exit the simulation. While I'm here, what I'd like to do is do a finishing pass on that inside bore. So I'm gonna steal some of the work I've done in this adaptive instead of creating a new 2D2 contour from scratch. I'm just gonna right click on this 2D adaptive and choose create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. What that does is it copies the strategy and just changes it from a 2D adaptive to a 2D contour. So you can see when I go to my geometry, my geometry is already selected. When I go to my heights, the heights I used in the previous operation are selected, although I do wanna make a small adjustment. On the bottom height, instead of the stock bottom for this, I wanna to go to the model bottom. There's no reason to go all the way down to the bottom of the stock to clean it up when we're just gonna rough it off in the next setup that we create. On the passes, I'm gonna make a couple changes here. I don't need to do multiple depths for this since we're only taking 10 thousandths of an inch. We can go that full depth of the part. And I'm also going to turn smoothing off. I wanna, I wanna as accurate of a tool path as I can get for this 2D contour. On the linking tab, there's only one small change I need to make. I don't want a pre-drill position anymore, so I'll just hit the X to clear that, and now I can hit OK. And there you can see my 2D contour tool path, and if I want, I can simulate that. And when I hit play, that wall should turn green, letting me know that everything is complete on the inside. I'm gonna steal some of the work that I just did by 
using my control or command button and selecting these two operations. And now I'm gonna right click and choose copy. I'm gonna right click on my setup and choose paste. And that's gonna create duplicates of those two toolpaths. And I'm gonna use these to rough the outside of the part now. So for the 2D adaptive, I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna to go to my geometry tab. I'm gonna throw away my chain that I have selected and I'm gonna select a new chain. And that's the area that I'm gonna cut and now I can go to my heights tab. I can't go all the way to the stock bottom for this operation. If I do, I'm gonna cut through my vice jaws. So what I need to do instead is say model bottom, but I still wanna go about 20 thousandths of an inch past the bottom of the part. On the passes tab, for the most part, everything should be set up okay. I don't need multiple depths on this. I'm not taking off enough material because I'm not going the full depth. So I should be okay not using multiple depths. I'm gonna use the same radial stock to leave and no axial stock. And again, I want smoothing on. The only other change I wanna make is on the linking tab. I don't need a pre-drill position. In fact, that'll that'll cause some issues. So I'm gonna throw that away. And let's hit okay and see what this toolpath looks like. One of the things you might note is that there's some reposition moves here. If I simulate this, We'll watch the tool cut, and it's going to do some lifts that I don't like. So here's one of the lifts coming up. Here's another one of the lifts coming up. And I'd like that tool to stay down more. So what I wanna do is edit this 2D adaptive, and I'm gonna go to the linking tab, and I wanna increase my stay down level to 80%, and I'm also going to increase my stay down distance to say 2.5 inches. Now when the tool stays down and repositions, I want that tool to go back as fast as it can. On my machine, I know that I can use 400 inches a minute, and it won't cause any problems. And in fact, in my control, I could put 20,000 inches a minute and the, and the machine will just go as fast as it can. On some machines, you can only put in the maximum cutting feed rate that your machine is able to do. So you might have to look that up and put that number in for what your machine is capable of for a maximum cutting feed rate. Not a, not a rapid feed rate, but a maximum cutting feed rate. With that change made, I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see that those retracts are gone. So if I simulate this, the tool is going to stay down the entire time when it does those same repositioning moves. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna exit my simulation. I can now edit my 2D contour, and I'm gonna right click and choose Edit. And for this, I'm just gonna to go to my geometry tab, throw away my chain of material, and I'm gonna select the chain at the very bottom of the part. And let's just hit okay and see what we get by default. So for the most part, this toolpath looks pretty good. The one thing I don't like is where it leads in, and I think I can make it do a better job. So let me hit the home button here and let's edit this toolpath. On the linking tab, what you'll see is we have something called the preferred lead in position. And I wanna click on the point where this curve and this straight line segment meet at the top of this vertical line. And now when I hit OK, Fusion is going to lead in and lead out on that point. And it's on the front of the machine and I have great visibility of that point as I'm running this when I'm out on the machine looking at it. I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna show you a couple other small changes that I've made. Now, if we go to the heights, you can see I'm cutting 20 thousandths of an inch past the model bottom, which is great. And on the passes tab, one of the things that you'll notice that I have set is a finishing overlap. So where the tool leads in, it's gonna go around the part and it's gonna cut past where it led in before it leads out to help reduce the witness mark. I'm gonna do a couple more things in this toolpath to help that even more, but I just wanted to note that you see this finishing overlap. And to get that, what I've done is, if you click on the three dots and choose edit expression, I've used a formula called tool diameter times 25% times 0.25, and that will take any diameter that I use and go 20% past the diameter for a finishing overlap, so I don't have to remember to go in and type that in all the time. On the linking tab, what I want the tool to do is I want it to just cut straight in, go around the part, and when it gets past, I want it to cut straight past and just slightly arc out. So for my lead in sweep angle, I'm gonna change this to be zero degrees, and then I want to have a different lead out angle. So I'm gonna uncheck same as lead in. Now that exposes the lead out sweep angle and I'm gonna set that lead out sweep angle to be 45 degrees. Now when I hit okay, you'll see that my lead in lead out looks slightly different. The tool is just coming straight in, going around the part, it cuts past a little bit and then arcs back off. So if we watch that in a simulation one more time, 
you'll see the tool doesn't do that 90 degree move to start. It goes past a little bit and then just arcs off the part. And for the most part, this part is roughed and finished. The only thing we have left to do is add some chamfer tool paths. I mentioned in the previous video that I could have bottled chamfers on the part, but I find it easier to do in cam. And I'm gonna go to the 2D menu and use the 2D chamfer command to apply the chamfer to those edges. On the tool tab, I wanna go and select a tool and the tool I wanna to select is out of my Autodesk model engine project. And you'll see that I have tool number 12, which is a quarter inch 45 degree chamfer mill. And I'll select that. And for the geometry, I just wanna click on the edges that I want to machine. Again, we're gonna skip the dowels because we already put those chamfers on when we did the spot drilling operation. So I'll just go and click on my different edges that I want. And now I'm gonna jump straight over to the passes tab. I don't need to worry about the heights. I'm gonna go straight to passes. I'm gonna add a finishing overlap here. Here you can see I don't have it. So I'm just gonna do say 30,000 an inch for this. And I want a chamfer width of 0.01. I'm gonna do a chamfer uh, tip offset of 0 0.08. I'm gonna start out with 0 0.08. And I'm gonna do a chamfer clearance, although it really shouldn't come into play in this part, of 0 0.001, a really small chamfer clearance. And I don't think there's really anything I wanna do uh, for linking to make a change. If I did, I could set a preferred entry position, say on that point again. And now I'll choose okay. And we'll see the chamfer tool pass. But if we look, we probably see that we have a problem because this tool path didn't chamfer these holes. And the reason for that is based on the chamfer tip offset I've asked for, it it's too deep and it wouldn't be able to pull it off without wrecking the edge of the hole. So let me edit that. I'm gonna go to my passes tab instead of 80,000 of an inch, let's try 50,000 of an inch and I'll hit okay. And that time now you can see that I can see my 2D chamfer tool path and it's done all the edges. So the last thing I want to do for this is I just wanna do a quick simulation to make sure everything's okay. And I'm gonna do a little trick where I turn off the model. I'm gonna click on my, uh, my setup and now I'm gonna simulate. And so now whatever I see is actually what the stock is gonna look like when I'm done. So there's my facing tool path. We do my spot drills. You can see the chamfers appear on those holes. I do my drilling drill the 3 8 through the hole, rough it out on the inside, and then it's gonna do the next step down, followed by the 2D contour of that hole to finish it to size. It's gonna rough the outside of the part out. Now it's gonna do the finishing pass, and then it'll come and do all my chamfers. And with the model off, I can look and see the chamfers on the hole. If I have the model on, you can see I can't see those chamfers as well because the model is poking through those edges and I can't see it. So that is what I'm gonna do for the very first setup and I am complete with the top side and I'm ready to move on to do the bottom side of the part now. For my next setup, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the part left to right. So I'll just rotate this around and to make sure I did it right, when I click on my first setup, I see the axis pointing the opposite direction. So let me know, let, let, lets me know I flipped it the right way. For this, I'm gonna make another setup and I'm gonna click on the Z arrowhead to get things facing the right way. I'm also gonna click on the X arrowhead to get that axis facing the right way. And the next thing I wanna do is instead of touching off on the stock, so if we look, the it's on the bottom of the stock. I want this to actually be on the bottom of the model, the machine face. So I'm gonna change this to be a model box point and it should hop up onto the bottom face of the model, still in the center. And that's where I'm gonna leave this for my second setup. On my stock tab, I'm gonna do something called from proceeding setup and I'm gonna choose continue rest machining. So that's gonna inherit the stock as it was from the very first setup and pass that on to my second setup. And I'll do this as a G54 as well, and I can hit okay. So when I click on my setup, it doesn't look like it's done it right yet, but when we go and start doing some operations, you'll see that the stock is gonna look like, to start with, what it looked like coming off of setup one. I wanna get rid of that hat of material to start out with. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the, uh, the 3D menu and choose adaptive clearing. And I'm gonna go select a tool out of my library. And the tool that I'm gonna select is gonna to be tool number 13, which is an inch and a quarter shear hog. This tool is really good at removing material. Um, it's not gonna take very long to machine this hat of material off at all. You can see it's cutting at 10,000 RPM at 200 inches a minute and 10,000 speed per tooth. So 
taking a nice healthy cut. For my geometry, what I wanna do is select nothing. I want Fusion to figure out wherever there's stock remaining and to get rid of that. So I'm not gonna select anything, which, machine, which means I'm gonna machine everything. On the Heights tab, I'm gonna cut from the stock top, but I don't wanna go all the way to the model bottom. I just wanna to go to the model top because all I'm trying to do in this operation is get rid of that hat of material. So stock top to model top, and on my passes tab, everything is set for me. I have my 200,000 step over. I have a 200,000 maximum roughing step down. And one of the things that I wanna do here is I wanna leave some stock for a cleanup pass. So I'm gonna come down to my stock to leave. Radial, I'm gonna do negative 0.05, which feels kind of odd, but that is gonna make the cutter start cutting a little bit farther out. Again, I'm just gonna touch off on the four sides of the hat of the material I have. So that hat isn't super accurate, and I just wanna make sure I get rid of all of it, so I wanna cut negative outside the bounds. For the axial stock to leave, I'm gonna leave 0.02 of stock that I can come back and face off. Maybe I'll change, I'm gonna leave 0.01 for my facing operation. So I'll do 0.01 here of material to come back and face off. On my linking tab, I'm gonna set my stay down level to be 80% and I will set the no engagement feed rate to 400. Although I don't think this tool is gonna lift off at all. I don't have any pre-drill positions or anything like that. So with that, I can go ahead and hit okay. I almost forgot to do one thing. If I go back to passes, I also wanna turn smoothing on for this tool path. Now I can hit okay. And what you'll see is according to Fusion, we'll see how close this is. It takes roughly seven seconds to get that hat of material off. Now I don't doubt it's gonna take longer than that. That's just calculating a maximum feed rate all the way around. And if we simulate this, so what's gonna happen is this tool is gonna to come down and it's just gonna start cutting that hat of material off. It's taking a pretty healthy step over and it'll just spiral in until all that stock is gone. Next thing I'm gonna do with this tool is I'm just gonna face off the part. So I'll do a 2D facing operation. Using the same tool, the geometry is fine. I'll go to my heights tab. I wanna cut from the stock top to the model top. That's fine because there's only 10,000 of an inch remaining. The one thing I wanna make sure is I'm doing a pretty good step over. I think I'm gonna increase the step over to an inch. This is an inch and a quarter diameter tool, so I'll just increase it a little bit. And I'll also do a slight stock offset of 0.05. Everything looks pretty good. I'm only gonna do climb cuts for this. And on the linking tab, I have my extend before retract set up so I can go ahead and hit okay. And if I simulate what's left there, all this is gonna do is go and do a facing operation to remove that last 10 thousandths inch of material that's left on the top of the part. This is gonna be my second setup. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a third setup. And so I'm just gonna do another setup here and it's gonna be pretty much the same as the second setup. Again, I want to choose a model box point and that'll make it choose that center point there. And I don't want it to actually be the center point. I'm gonna choose this outside corner. So once I have the hat of material exposed, I'm gonna take my Heimer and I'm gonna to touch off my model for X. I'm gonna to touch off on my model for Y and I don't have to touch off on Z because I set that off the top of my parallels to begin with off the bottom of the model. So I'm just gonna move it to that corner to get a slightly more accurate tool path. For my stock, I'm again gonna do from proceeding setup and continue rest machining and post process is going to be a G54. So with those options set, I'll just move this up out of the way a little bit and I'll hit okay. And there's my next setup. I'm gonna minimize my setup too. And all I really wanna do with this is put the chamfers on here. So I'm gonna steal this 2D chamfer tool path I created in the first setup by, by right clicking and saying copy. And then I'm gonna right click on the setup and say paste. Now if I expand this out, I'm gonna edit this chamfer. I'll just go to my geometry and throw away my choices and select the new choices that I wanna machine for this side of the part. So that's gonna be outside edges, all the holes in the bore. All the rest of my choices are made with the exception of on the linking, I might wanna reselect a new point where I want the tool to enter and I can hit okay. And all this tool, uh, all this setup is gonna do is put the chamfers on my part. So you can see the bottom side went pretty fast. All I have left to do is stand this up and drill, the, drill and tap these holes. So that's what, we're, what we'll work on next. Again, the last setup I need to create should go pretty quick. I'm just gonna kind of stand this part up. Maybe I'll click on the home button first. And now I just wanna stand this part up and I'll click on my corner that I wanna machine and I'm ready to make my setup. I'm gonna do a setup 
and I'm gonna click on the base of the Z and the top face of my part. That gets my work coordinate system orientation set for me. And I'm gonna move over to, I want this to be a model box point. So for my origin, I'm gonna say model box point and I'll use this point right up there. So I'll touch off the top will be on the Z face, the X will be on the left face, and the Y will be on the back face of the part. For the stock, I'll do from proceeding setup again and continue rest machining. And for post-process, I'm gonna use one to give me a G54. I can steal some things if I want to. So up on my first setup, I have some spotting operation. I can right click on this and say copy and I'll just paste this into my setup five. And now I can expand this out. I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna go to my geometry. I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna click on that face and that face. And now you can see I'm spotting those holes and I'm not hitting the wall of my tapped holes. So I'm happy with that. I can hit okay. The diameter of this hole is 0.159 and that's what I wanna use for my tap drill. So I'm gonna grab a drilling operation I'm gonna go select it out of my tool library and I'll look through here and find my 0.159 and I wanna use aluminum drilling as my preset. I'm gonna select my diameters and I can just click on both of them. I could have used select same, diam same size diameter but it's still two clicks either way. I'm ready to move on to the heights tab and I know for this that I also wanna drill the tip through the bottom so I get the shoulder of the drill all the way down to the bottom of the hole. For the cycle, I'm gonna use a chip breaking partial retract and I'm happy with that. I can go ahead and hit okay. Next, I'm gonna tap this. Again, this is a 1032 tapped hole, so I'm gonna choose the drill operation. I'm gonna select a tool out of my Autodesk model engine and I'm gonna filter on the right-hand side by tap right hand and there is my 1032 tap. It's gonna tap this at 500 RPM. For my geometry, I'm just gonna again, gonna click on my two holes. I'm happy with that. For my heights, this time I don't wanna drill the tip through the bottom and I'm gonna put a positive offset of 0 0.05. I'm just gonna pull that tool up like 50 thousandths of an inch so I don't bottom it in the bottom of the hole. On the cycle, Fusion's already detected that I'm using a tap and it's gonna use a tapping cycle. So it sets my feeds and speeds based off of the RPM and the pitch of the tap and I don't have to do any math for that. So I'll hit okay. My tapping is done. The last operation I need to do is a drilling operation. I'm gonna select a tool. I'm gonna to grab it out of my document because I've already used this three uh, inch drill before. Aluminum drilling. And I'm gonna go select my hole. I'll click on that for my heights. I'm gonna do hole top to hole bottom. Drill the tip through the bottom. And I wanna drill through say 100,000 seven inch. So I'll say 0.1. If I look at this from the front, you can see I'm going all the way through. And I am going to also use chip breaking partial retract. We're probably within the range where we could just straight drill that. But again, this isn't the greatest drill in the world and I don't wanna risk getting this far and having an issue. So I'm gonna pack that and I'll hit okay. And that finishes the cam tool pathing on this part. Now to do the other side, really all I have to do is rotate it around, retouch off on it the same way and run the same program that I just had and that'll put the holes on the opposite side. I hope you guys like this process. I know this video got slightly longer than usual, but hopefully you picked up a lot of good information. You can let me know in the comments, did it take too long? Do you want me to break this up into chunks? Do you want me to do this in a different way? I, I wanna hear your feedback because this is the reason I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it because I wanna help other people get better with Fusion Cam. If you have any questions, you can email me at kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com or you can leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I'm back. As I was editing this video, I realized I missed a step. I didn't add a chamfer into my last setup. So I wanna grab this chamfer toolpath from the previous setup and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to my last setup and I'm gonna paste it in. And now I can edit the chamfer toolpath go to my geometry, throw away my selections, grab my new hole edge and hit OK. And that's gonna put a 10,000s chamfer on my part. And that now will conclude the part. So sorry I missed it. Um, and I am really gonna go away now. So I will see you guys later.